the things that you love should be the things that you do, and the things that you do should be the things that you love. Recently, we lost one of the greatest science fiction writers that's ever lived, Mr. Ray Bradbury. He has been an influence on me since I was a child. Uh, he's one of those names I remember hearing very early on. And I think also later when I found out that he too was influenced by comics, I think that was kind of a big plus for me because that's really where my love of reading started was with comic books, same same as him. There, there, was a, there, was a, there was a connection there, which is weird to say with somebody who I've never actually met, but just through his writing and interviews and things like that, there was some kind of bond that I felt, and I know, maybe other people felt that too, and that's why he was so prolific, and why he was so well known, and why he was such a great writer, because uh, he could bring that out in people. But I know, for me, he's had a major influence on my life. And, you know, on both the science fiction and the science end, because his science fiction made me want to learn more about science. We are all the sons and daughters of time. There's, there's actually a great piece by Neil Gaiman, which if I can find the link for it, I'll post it down in the regular spot, but it's, it's a short story called The Man Who Forgot Ray Bradbury, and it's about, you know, as you age, you lose things. That's even kind of what Bradbury did with Fahrenheit 451, was talk about how, you know, memory changes and society changes and the memories can be lost and you don't even need like a big government change it could just be the people decide to make the change on their own and that was one of the things that I think was truly terrifying about Fahrenheit 451 was that it wasn't some kind of big brother element it was just the people decided they didn't want to read and society changed around what the people wanted and it's it, that one particularly scares me because we're approaching that kind of decision I've seen the youth I've been in the schools I know how they feel about reading and we are this close to the edge my friends and that's why I, it's it's incredibly unfortunate that we lost Miss Bradbury when we did because I think that you know his love of books his love of literature and his love of writing is something that it was kind of infectious. It would kind of spread throughout anyone who had any kind of t contact with him, whether it was through his books, interviews, tribute videos, through conversations they had with him, through other writers who were inspired by him. And I think it would be an out-and-out -out travesty if the world that he set forth in Fahrenheit 451 came about. Imagination should be the center of your life. There's also this concept that Ray talks about where you know his characters would actually come and speak to him and tell them other parts of their story and ask him whether you know their story is completely told or if there's more that can be told about certain aspects of their personality. You know, does the reader know everything about them? And I love that idea. Because I've, I've felt like certain characters that I write kind of stick with me and keep, you know, calling me back, saying, hey, there's more to tell here. This isn't the end of my story. And, you know, other writers have talked about this. Uh, Robert E. Howard, the creator of Conan the Barbarian, would talk about how he could feel Conan over his shoulder, you know, just looking down menacingly and saying, you know, telling him to write his story because there's more to tell and you better just sit there and finish writing. I want to say there's something where he actually talked about Conan had his sword in hand when he was standing back there just like ready to just chop Howard down if he didn't finish. Now, I'm sure Bradbury's interactions with the characters were, weren't quite that violent, but that's a big difference between Robert E. Howard and Ray Bradbury. Um, but I, I always love that idea. And I love hearing when writers talk about that. Because 
you know, as a reader, you put a certain amount of life into these characters that they've spent a long time with. And to know that, you know, they're the same way, at least, you know, the, the really good writers, they're the same way. When they breathe life into these characters, they don't always go away when the writing is done. They stick around. They kind of, you know, stay in their head. Or they'll, you know, they'll pop in every now and again and see how things are going. Say, oh, by the way, more stuff has happened now. You may want to, I don't know, either tell people more about me or do something. And that's, I, I love that idea. So rest in peace, Ray Bradbury. Hopefully you've gone to Mars with all the other writers that you love. And you're just sitting there sharing your stories with them now. <laughs>